Which dividend ETF has performed the best during this recent downturn? It seems like over the past four to five months, everything is going down in value. Inflation is ruining just about every single facet of our lives. Everything costs more money now, and it's affecting every single sector of the economy. In this video, we're gonna do a deep dive look with one of my custom spreadsheets into 12 different dividend exchange traded funds. We looked at these 12 dividend ETFs about six months ago, but a lot has happened since then. We are five months into a significant market downturn. How do these 12 different dividend ETFs compare against each other in a market downturn? All right, guys, so we're in the custom spreadsheet that I built just for this video. We're looking at 13, 13 different dividend ETFs. And our goal is to see just really how they perform in a, a prolonged downturn. Now, I recognize that we are looking at just a snapshot in time here that, you know, the results here could vary wildly if we were to look back another six months or two years or three years. I recognize that and I know that, you know, some of these investments might look good in just this time frame and not when you look at a larger picture. But the whole point of this video is to isolate this time frame, which we haven't experienced in a very long time with the exception of COVID. We want to see how these investments perform in an extended downturn. So just keep that in mind as we look at the results. Previously, in looking at these types of dividend ETFs consistently we have seen that this one right here outperforms the rest. The Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF, SCHD. The big question becomes, in a market downturn, how does this investment perform? How do all of them perform, both with respect to actual dividend income as well as overall portfolio balance? And then we'll also look at a total return percentage and in total dollars. And then of course, we'll take a look at the graph to see what the year-to-date performance looks like over the entire five months. So let's go ahead and dive in here. We've got the Wisdom Tree US High Dividend Fund, DHS. And we've got HDV, the iShares Core High Dividend, the Invesco S&P 500 High Dividend Low Volatility, SPHD, the iShares Select Dividend ETF, DVY. Then we've got SPYD, which is the Spider Portfolio S&P 500 High Dividend ETF, the Invesco Dow Jones Industrial Average Dividend ETF, DJD. Then we've got SDY, which is a S&P Dividend ETF. Then we've got the funds from Vanguard, the High Dividend Yield ETF, VYM. And also down here, the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation Index Fund, VIG. Uh, we've also got Schwab. We've got the ProShares S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats ETF, Noble. Then we've also got the Wisdom Tree US Quality Dividend Growth Fund, DGRW. Then DGRO from iShares, the Core Dividend Growth ETF. And finally, the Invesco S&P 500 Quality ETF, SPHQ. Now, I'm not going to dive into each one of these dividend ETFs and talk about all of the fundamentals to it, how it works, and what types of investments are in these ETFs. But if you want to learn more about that, check out the previous videos, which I will link down in the description. Now, for the record, what we're looking at here is if we invested $100,000 on January 1st into these investments, what would be our overall portfolio balance be in the near the end here of May 2022 and factoring in that we were reinvesting all dividends. Okay, let's take a look at dividend income. Okay, top result here for actual dividend income were the Invesco S&P 500 High Dividend Low Volatility ETF, SPHD, then also SPYD, which had significantly higher dividend income than the rest. We also can see that the lowest performer here was SPHQ, the S&P 500 Quality ETF, which only brought in $323.91. SCHD falls right in the middle of the pack here with a dividend income of $687.14. And again, this cash flow is really important to us as a dividend investor. We're not all tied up in the overall portfolio balance. It could be important to us depending on what stage of our investment journey we're in and if we're needing to sell shares, but ultimately, at the end of the day, as a dividend cash flow investor, you don't need to care about the overall portfolio value. What we care about is the monthly cash flow or the quarterly cash flow. So do you guys know what the fastest growing crime is affecting millions of people here in America? Well, the answer is identity theft. And there's a new victim every 14 seconds. I actually had a recent experience where my credit card information was stolen and they racked up like $500,000 in bills. And that was a headache to deal with. And that's why I'm excited to partner with today sponsor, Aura. Aura is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all combined into one easy to use app. You might have one of these services already, but if you don't have all the tools, it's like locking the front door, but leaving the back door wide open. Those who have had their identity stolen are often shocked when it happens. 
Imagine trying to log into your email account one day only to see the password had changed hours ago, and then you start getting notifications of activity from your bank, credit cards, or crypto accounts. It's scary and unfortunately a reality for way too many people. Thankfully, Aura monitors the dark web for your emails, passwords, and social security numbers and sends alerts fast right to your phone and email. Now, I actually use Aura, and when I entered my email into Aura, they monitored the dark web and found that my email and password had been exposed already. And when it comes to fraud, every second matters. You can connect your credit and bank accounts and you'll get notified of any changes up to four times faster than Aura's competitors. Aura's VPN allows you to stay anonymous online by keeping your browsing history and personal information safe and encrypted. Protect your family and yourself from identity theft. Go to aura.com forward slash average Joe also linked below in the description. And if you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two week free trial so you can see for yourself how many times Aura finds you or your family members personal information on the dark web. I'm a little bit curious to see how many of you guys had the same problem I did. So if you happen to sign up with Aura for that two week trial, make sure to leave down in the comments below, leave your two cents, let me know how many times they found your information. With all this in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the final portfolio of balance as of May 25th. All right, so interestingly here enough, remember when we looked at the covered call ETF, we didn't find any of the investments that were worth more than what we invested $100,000. But that is not the case here in looking at these dividend ETFs. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, we'll call it six here because we've got this 99 right here. Six different dividend ETFs that are just about worth at least what we paid for them, if not significantly more over the, those just those five months when most investments have gone down in value. These six investments here are the Wisdom Tree US High Dividend Fund. We've also got the iShares Core High Dividend ETF. We've also got the S&P 500 High Dividend Low Volatility, SPHD. And then we've also got the iShares Select Dividend ETF, DVY, and the SPDR Portfolio S&P 500 High Dividend ETF. And you can contrast that to right down here, seeing the lowest value is the Invesco S&P 500 Quality ETF, SPHQ. So let's take a look at the total return based on dollars and percentages here. So when we factor in total return percentage here, the top performing dividend ETF is DHS, the Wisdom Tree US High Dividend Fund, with a total gain of $8,954.54. Then relative close, we've got a second investment here with iShares Core High Dividend ETF, HDV. Given that most investments are down on the year, the fact that these here, these one, two, three, four, five, are able to actually generate profits. And we can see, that, again, the worst performing investment here was the Invesco S&P 500 Quality ETF, SPHQ where it had a total loss here, total return loss of 14.75%. So I gotta be honest here, some feedback in looking at the results from this video. I was really shocked to see how poorly, to be honest, I mean, middle of the pack, but still poorly, SCHD from Schwab performed. It has continuously looked over the last five or 10 years, it was launched in 2012, it's looked really strong in all previous comparisons. However, once we put it up against other, the same dividend ETFs we've looked at previously, but in an extended downturn over the past five months, it has not performed as well. It has lost money where other dividend ETFs have shown that it can actually make money still in this environment. So that was my first big takeaway from doing this analysis. The second was, isn't it refreshing? And it is, it is for me, even though I believe this in my soul, in my heart, isn't it you know refreshing to see dividend ETFs, an investment, that is outperforming an index, but making money, making money when the market is losing money. Now, I'm not gonna say that that's always going to happen, right? We know that dividend paying companies are stocks, the stock market, and they will trend and they will correlate well together most of the time. But in these types of, of environments, isn't it refreshing to see the opportunity to have less volatility and actually have some upside when everything else is down? That was my second big takeaway. Let's take a look at the chart here to see how these investments perform over the entire five months. So again, we started them all at $100,000 and from there, things varied widely. We've got some that just took off down to the bottom here, red and yellow, which are the SPHQ and the VIG. Both dropped pretty hard here. There's DHS at the top worth 109,000, followed by HDV. A lot of these investments do work, move in tandem with each other, but some just kind of move pretty much sideways and gained over time. And that includes SPYD in lime green, as well as in white, that is HDV, and then also in purple DHS. So at the end of the day, when we talk about dividend ETFs, we have to remember the fact that we can't get all caught up with volatility and daily changes in the price of the stock. If we're not investing for cash flow, if we're just investing for portfolio growth, 
then I recommend you go out there and just buy some index funds. If you liked this video, check this one out right over here. It's going to be a great next step for you for learning more about dividend ETFs and dividend cash flow. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. I respond to all comments on the day I post a video. And that's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day and please remember to stay healthy both physically and financially. Have a good one.